Hi everyone. So this is Devaprata, and today I am going to show you some applications of single dimension array. But before that, I will not waste my time by introducing myself. So all the links about myself and everything will be given in the description section of this class. So as usual, I want to start with like I was more scared uh, when I was a student. So my suggestion will always be like just practice and practice and don't, don't think too much. Trust me, it will be fine if you are following my classes and all of those students who has already followed classes do not think much just go through that okay just go through that and practice that's all that will be enough for you so today uh, my topic as i have said it is few applications of single dimension array so we have already had two classes of single dimension array so now today we will check some popular questions from this chapter so before uh, getting into this uh, class if you are uh, this is your first class if it is then i will suggest you to go through all of my previous classes it is a, actually it is a series of classes and it is uh, my intended st students are not those talented ones i'm just targeting the students who is suffering uh, like the same what i suffered at at when i was student so my targeted audience are those students who are suffering a lot so my suggestions will be if you are really starting from zero, start from the class one and go one by one and then check this class. OK, and if you are, if already if you already know uh, that what is array and all, then obviously uh, you can go through this. So some popular applications or some popular questions asked during interview or in the college exams, even in the school exams as well, the co few common questions are like shorting, stack, and queue, all this. Basically, these chapters comes under the data structure part. But still, if you have mentioned, like you know Java or you know uh, like any language, so interviewers or examiners or uh, teachers used to ask these kind of questions. And believe me, these are very popular questions, very popular. OK, so I would say it is most popular question. OK, so first one I want to start with today is selection short. So uh, we will not learn much things today. So what is selection short? Suppose if I give you one example of selection short, like uh, what is shorting? First, let me explain that. Shorting means if you have an array called suppose 50, 40, uh, 20, 30 and 10 suppose let it be the array and you want to short it what does it mean short short means you have you want to if you want to arrange this array in ascending or descending order by default let it be the ascending order so i want to arrange these values like this actually in real world uh, there are many ways uh, you can follow to short this array short means to arrange this array as per the ascending order of values okay so there are many ways available but in syllabus uh, some popular shortings are selection short uh, bubble short insertion short uh, march short uh, radix short uh, quick short and hip short so these seven are seven shortings are most popular there are many more, believe me, but today I will show you only these two, selection and bubble, because all of those are basically a part of data structure. So I will be focusing on this. And these two are most asked question. Okay, so if I concentrate on selection short, there are many ways, as I explained. So what is the way of selection short? How you can arrange this value? So in selection short, what happens? Let me explain what they do actually so they first picks up the first location the first value of that they just pick up the first value after that after picking this up they compare it with all other values so zero position to one zero position to two zero to three three and zero to four in our case we have five size array suppose so if this is uh, say x uh, this is i 
and J will be ranging from here to here. Sorry, from here. Uh, sorry, uh, from here to here. So the range of J is from here to here. So I will be starting from here, and J will be starting from the next value of I, and ending will be at the end. So what happens first? Let me check out. So fifty is greater than forty. Yes. So those will be swept. Then forty is greater than twenty. Yes. So those will be swept. Twenty is now greater than thirty. No. No swept. This value, the value at ith position, should be greater than the value of jth position. I mean to say, if ai greater than aj, then the value will be swept. swept otherwise not if this happens obviously i will use the third variable if you can remember the first class uh, where we swept two values in terms of uh, and wine glass and another tea glass cup of tea and glass of wine we swept the content in the similar way today as well i want to swap the value of ai and aj but remember it will only happen if the value of ai means this value in the circle is greater than the value of j so now you will be asking me what is the value of j so j obviously will be starting from i plus 1 and it will be till the a dot length minus 1 because it is the first thing we have learned in this uh, array section like the size of array is length of length minus 1 because array starts from 0 but okay uh, i will not look into this part as of now so let me uh, go further so 20 and 30 no swap because ai is not greater than aj anyway uh, i'm not explaining in terms of uh, technical terms first let me sh show you how, what happens actually so last 20 is greater than 10 Yes, twenty is greater than ten. Then swap. So ten will come here and twenty will come here. So this is that's all about this turn. So if I go next, if I go for the next turn, and if I choose the second one, okay. So what will happen in that case? I will be coming into this position. So now I will do the same thing. I will just do the same thing for the remaining remaining uh, values. So fifty will be compared with forty, not fifty. This position value will be compared to this, and this position will be compared to this. So now, if I explain again, fifty is greater than forty. Yes, fifty is greater than forty. Then swap. Then forty is greater than thirty. Yes, then swap. Thirty is greater than twenty. Yes, then swap. So thirty will come here, twenty will come here. So that's all for this round. Then I will be moving into this position, and now again the same thing will happen if I explain. Okay, let me choose some other color. So now, if I am choosing this this position, and I want to compare that with this value and this value only, means J will be. J will be starting from here to here. That's all. So now, fifty is greater than forty. Yes, fifty is greater than forty. So forty will come here. Fifty will come. Will go there. Forty and thirty. Forty is greater than thirty. Yes. So thirty will come here and forty will go there. So now, I am I am just left with one value only. So the last comparison. So let me choose. uh suppose uh, the next position means the next position is this one and here i will be comparing this value with this value only 50 and 40 so 50 is greater than 40 yes then swap simply and we are done so this is the and and you can check the the values in the array are sorted means are arranged in the ascending order so this is one way okay so here you can see i do not need to iterate i till the last position of there it will be enough if i iterate 
the value of i starting from zero because you can see i started from this position and ended it at this position so not even till the last element means second last element so what is second last element in the array it will be a length minus two okay so and here i plus plus or i can say i equals to i plus one here as well j equals to j plus one because i have not explained yet what is the functionality of i plus plus and i plus one and all so i'll be explaining that later but this is the program by which you can short an array okay i guess you got this idea so so let me clear this drawing first and let me do this program in the compiler let me copy this out and if i go to the compiler okay so online gdp say uh, okay let me write few lines quickly okay and i think you know how to input the values so first let me write and if i ask first enter the number of elements the number of elements and if i input that inside n after that i can okay let me first copy and paste the shorting part the selection short okay and let me introduce the array and i can take the all the elements of the array into the elements and i can introduce a for loop equals to zero i less than a dot less than equals to i prefer to write length minus one and i equals to i plus one and write something like ai equals to sc dot next in so i hope this part is clear how to take the input from the user so this is just all about the taking input. Now from this part, I am writing the query, uh, writing this program for selection short. And after doing that, I can print it back. I can print the ascending version of the array. So I can write here, the elements in shorted order is, something like this so i will just print the array system dot out dot print and ai plus this so i hope this is okay let me test it out so if i run this program okay something happened i have not introduced int here as well here I hope it will work now. So if I execute the program, okay, enter the number of elements, let it be five and the elements are 40, 50, 20, 30 and 10, let it be. So take a look, the element in shorted order is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So what I am doing, um, let me just revise it quickly as you can see the code here. So what I am doing, so first, if I am taking 40, 50, 20, 30, and 10 in the example. So at first, I have taken i at this position because you can see I am explaining once again i is starting from 0. And j is iterating from i plus 1 to till the end. What does it mean? j is ranging from here to here. Means I am comparing all the values here. So if I write, the j will be placed somewhere here. So first, with this i, I am comparing this value of j. Then with 
this position i am comparing this the value will keep changing so from this position i am comparing this from this position i am comparing comparing this so i is fixed j is iterating from i plus 1 the next value of i till the last okay the same so the same will happen and i will be coming to this place and same will happen for j from i plus 1 to the last next i will come to this place and the same will happen for j j will be iterating from this place to this place and at last i will be coming here and it will compare only with one j okay and there is no need to bring i until this position because uh there is because array will be already shorted so this is the last comparison i can make here there is if if i bring i here there is nothing to compare after that so i will be iterating till the second last element so you can check the loop so here it is a dot length minus 2 because it is second last and as you know the last position of the array is always a dot length minus 1 so j is iterating from i plus 1 to a dot length minus 1 so if you can write this program in front of interviewer they will be more than happy and the chances of getting job will be higher and for the students who are uh, doing this program in school and colleges so it is one of the most favorite questions of the examiner so i can guarantee if you are appearing for any board exam you will be getting this shorting exercise or shorting questions you will be facing that surely in any of your exams so if i go next and if i want to uh, find the logic of bubble shot the our second uh questions that we will try to solve today so what is the bubble shot it is another type of short let me take the some examples like uh, 40 50 10 30 and 20 so what is bubble shot now it is another way of uh, shorting the array so what what actually we will do in in this case so there are many ways to do the bubble shot but what i will do to now so first i will compare this with this after that this with this after that this with this and at last this with this my drawing is too bad do not mind but it it looks like the head of bubble okay that's why it is being called as bubble shot means my drawing is not that good but if you can imagine it has bubble this has bubble so these are kind of bubble head that's why this shorting is being termed as bubble shot but uh, there is uh, no meaning no one will be going to ask you like why it is being named as bubble shot why it is being named as selection shot but still so let me start the comparison so here 40 is greater than 50 uh, yes no 40 is not greater than 50 so i will not swap after that 50 is greater than 10 uh yes then swap so 50 will go into this place and 10 will come into this place 50 and 30 50 is greater than 30 uh yes so 30 will come into this place 50 will come into this place 50 and 20 50 is greater than 20 yes so 20 will come into this place 50 will come into this place so after the first round you can check the highest element sits into the last position okay so if i want to print the first four positions of an array what will be our program i can simply write a program like for int j equals to zero means i want to mean till the second last element means first four elements out of the five size array means till the second last element how can i print that int j equals to zero j less than equals to for the timing let it be three because this position is termed as zero this position will be one this position will be two this position will be three and this one is four everyone knows that by that by this time so j will be starting from zero and three apparently it should be ln minus two but let it be three for the time being and j plus plus so now if i want to print let me write sop in short of uh, system dot out dot print so if i write aj what it will do it will simply print it will take a photograph of 
40, 10, 30, and 20. These four persons will be printed. Yeah, I am saying this as a person. So now, if I want to print a couple photo, like 40 with 20, 10, 10 with 30, 30 with 20, 20 with 50. So what should I do? Then I will write AJ and AJ plus one. So I actually love to think in this way that helps me actually. So because I, I do not like to remember the codes, uh, my memory is only few MBs, believe me. So I cannot remember many things. So, uh, so I prefer this way to remember this program. So I want to take the photograph of this four person first. And after that, I want to take a couple photo. So 40 and 10, then 10 and 30. And with 30, I want to print 20. With 20, I want to print 50. So this is the way. So if I can take a, job, a couple photograph, or if we can print them together, why cannot we compare them as well? Obviously, we can. If we can print them together, we can compare them as well. So now I have already written the program that I explained a few minutes back. So I am comparing zero position value with one. After that, this and this, and this and this, and at last, this and this. Okay, now you are able to understand why I have iterated till three here. Why I have iterated till three? Because there is no meaning to iterate it till four, because then it will try to compare the value next. But there is a it will be uh, this value is not a part of the array and you will be getting an error named as array index out of bound. We'll be discussing those later. But if you get this kind of message in your uh, array exercise or in your array programs, that means you are trying to access a position which is not there in the array. So that's why I, I just kept it till three so that j and j plus one the last value will be compared this okay so so now if you know if aj is greater than aj plus one what will happen same like the wine and cup wine glass and cup of tea i will just i will try to swap them so temp equals to aj aj equals to aj plus one and aj plus one will be there. So that's all what we will do. Now, this exercise will be carried forward. What I'm trying to mean? So the next turn, it, I will try to compare 40 with 10. Means not 40 with 10, the position 0 with position 1, this and this position, and this and this position. Okay, I will not touch 50 because it is already shorted. So, now, so... To do the same task, uh, okay, first let me explain. 40 and 10, 40 is greater than 10, yes. So they will be swept. 40 and 30, uh, 40 is greater than 30, yes. So they will be swept. 40 and 20, 40 is greater than 20, yes. So they will be swept. So done. So in this case, it will be enough if I write, instead of three, if I write two, okay. So when I have given three, it compares all of the values, all of the elements of the array. When I am giving two, that means it is comparing until this. Means 10 with 30, zero with one position, one position with second position, second position with the third position. So now let me go further. Let me go further. And let me, this time, I will not touch 40. So I will compare the 0 and 1 and 1 and 2 only. So what I'm trying to mean, 10 with 30, 10 is greater than 30, no, no swap required. 30 with 10, yes, 30 is greater than, uh, 30 with 20, sorry, 30 is greater than 20, yes, then swap will be required. So 20 and 30. So that's all for the time being. So it will be enough if I write 0 and 1. So the value of j will be here 0 and 1. So I will take a couple photo of 0 and the neighboring elements of 0 and 1 with the neighboring elements of 1. That's all. So at the last, 
for the last turn, it will be enough if I iterate zero to zero. That means, let me explain. So that means the last iteration will be enough if I do it between these two. Okay. In this case, it will not be required because 10 is not greater than 20, but you cannot guarantee there might be something which is still pending in the last step. So you have to compare these two. So zero to zero will be the last step here. So now 10 and 20, yeah, so I have not required. So that's all. So now you can see I have written three at the first for the first iterations. Next, I have written two, then one, then zero. We have already done the chapter of for loop pattern where we have faced the same scenarios. But if you have not gone through that chapter, still it is okay. We can put an X here or we can put a value of I here. So I can put something like for I equals to uh, the first value of I, what we have taken three, I guess I can remember. And the last value of I, we have taken zero. If you can remember, we have just compared the last two value when we put zero here in this position. So I greater than zero and I equals to I minus one. So that will be enough to do the uh, a bubble shot. Okay. So if I copy, okay, now let me do one thing. Instead of three, I will write a dot length. I would like to write a dot length minus two. Is there any other hard coding exists? Let me check. No. So I can copy this program to uh, my compiler. Let me clear the drawings. Let me go to the compiler. So in case of selection shot, now what I will do, I will do, I will paste the code of bubble shot. So let me align it. Otherwise, I, I feel some problem uh, without alignment. I always find some problems. So I always prefer to uh, make the alignment correct. So let me write. Yep, I guess. So I'm done. So let me try to execute this code first. Okay. It will not execute because uh, I have not defined int here. Let me try to execute once again. <laughs> Yeah, so number of elements five, I will give some random values, 40, 50, 20, 30, and 10. It should work and yes, you can see the array is being shorted, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So this is a way how you can short using bubble short. So there are many more ways. Believe me, people uh, used to follow many other for loops as well. But uh, you, if you can find the for bubble short coding in the uh, internet, you will get uh, many uh, uh, type of for loop, but the idea behind these for loops are same. It is doing the same thing. If I explain again, so what they does actually, so let me take some uh, other values like 50, 30, 40. Okay. Let me take the example similar to our input 40, 50, 20, 30, and 10. So what they does, uh, what, what they do actually in the, in the, in the program, first compare these two, then compare these two, then compare these two, and then compare these two. That's all. After that, they compare in the next turn, they compare these two, these two, and until this part. Okay. So you can think this loop in another way, in another many ways, actually. So I can do something like this a dot length minus one, minus i, let it be. So for the first turn, I can write I equals to one. So there are many ways. So let me solve this in some other ways as well. And I can make it like a dot length minus one. I, I, I have to check. I, I really do not remember the code. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do the same thing. J zero to this position means three position. So that's why I have written a dot length minus i. I think minus i will not be enough. So I can write two here. So a dot length minus two. So you can you can think I am doing the same thing. The length of a is five. A dot length minus two means it is three. So I am doing the same thing. I am taking a photograph of these four persons. 
And after that, a couple photograph, 40 and 50, 50 and 20, and then this two person and this two person. And in the meanwhile, I can compare as well. If I can print them, if I can take the photograph of those two person, I can compare them as well. But the thing is, important thing is, I, I will try, I will iterate the value of J until this position. So that I am confirming like A length minus two. And after that, I am increasing the value of I. So the next time it will be A dot length minus three. That means I am doing the same thing until this position. Means I am comparing this and this, this and this, and this and this. That's all. Means until this position. Okay. So for the last one, let me think. So it will be iterated. Means last comparison will be this and this. So it will be, it should iterate from 0 to a dot length minus 5. So it should be, I should iterate till a dot length means i it should be till 5 so 5 minus 5 will become 0 so there are many loop available some people used to like uh, means like to write the programs with less than as well but i i really do not prefer to write the programs with less than so if i run this program it should behave in the similar way so if i uh, give some values like this it should short the array as well so this is being called as bubble short so the loop can be anything but i prefer the first approach uh, it is easier for me to remember you can pause the class and revert it back and try to do the program by yourself then you will be able to understand means means uh, if anyone checks the program when i give it to my students in my class they first say yes sir i got it but after that i freeze the screen i stop screen sharing and i ask them to write the same program again and, and immediately after i explain so at that time they face some problem and by doing this you will be able to understand what are the gaps till now so i will prefer to uh, prefer you to do the same thing just pause the class uh, Try to write the program by your, yourself right now. Okay. So, and you will be able to understand what are the errors you are getting. That means on that positions, you still have some doubts. So, only checking the class or only doing the class will not be enough. Okay. So, it will be always preferred if you practice it uh, by yourself. So, today I will, I will show you some examples of practicing. So, practice what I believe, really what I believe. Practice means, practice means, uh, if you, if you practice more, it means you, you can reach impossible things. I will show you some videos where, where I have checked. If you practice more, talent is not enough. If you practice, you can achieve some impossible things as well. I will, I will show you some videos uh, at the end of the classes, but it is the bubble shot for the time being. So, uh, what will happen? Uh, some people ask if I extend a bit more, like what will happen? Like 10, 20, if I already have given, so I will, I will assign another class for this later, but for the time being, just let me explain it quickly. What will happen if user enters a shorted array? So there is a way in bubble short, like it can identify if it is a shorted array. Means it, ex it compares, all the values one by one. If there is no swap required, no swap required, then it understands like, okay, it is already shorted. So how can he understand no swap required? I will introduce a variable like f equals to zero for the time being. So whenever, if there is a swap required, obviously the code will enter into this, this phase. And here I will write something f equals to one. So after this for loop completes, means one iteration is completed, I will check if f is still at zero. If f is still at zero, I will break the loop. I will just break the loop. If f is still at zero, I will break the loop. Okay. And by this way, 
I can confirm this, this code is being called as intelligent bubble shot. What does it mean? If the array is already shorted at some point, so it will check the full iteration. At the end of the iteration, if the value of f is still zero, it is something like prime number checking. So if it is not swapped in the full iteration, not even once, then I can say the array is already shorted. So that's why it is being called as intelligent bubble shot. It might happen in the middle of the interaction, in mid middle of iterations as well. Means, suppose I have an array input like this. So 10 with 20, no swap. 20 with 30, no swap. 30 with 50, no swap. 50 with 40, yes, swap required. So at this position, I will swap. So obviously the value of f will be one. So the loop will not be stopped at this position. But on the next turn, 10 with 20, no swap. 20 with 30, no swap. 30 with 40, no swap. So in this phase, f started from zero again. And after the full iteration, f is still zero. So I can say in the second turn, in the second iteration, the array becomes shorted. So I will break the big loop, means the outer loop. Here, if I write the break, it will immediately affect the immediate for loop on the top of this. So that is this loop, the outer loop. So it will stop the uh, outer loop and I will not go further for the checking of 10 and 20 and 20 and 30. Okay, on the third round. So the round will be stopped there immediately. So this is being called as intelligent bubble shot. Now few people can think, is I have not explained anything in, in the at the time of selection shot. So is there anything called intelligent selection shot? The answer is no. If you think more closely, like if I have something like this, so in selection shot, if you can remember, if you, uh, I, am, I am telling many more things for the time being, but if you can remember the way of selection shot, first I have to compare 10 with 50 in the case of selection shot, 10 with 40, 10 with 30, and 10 with 20. So here, 10 with 50, no swap required, 10 with 40, no swap required, 10 is 30, no swap required, 10 with 20, no swap required. So no swap required on the first round, but that doesn't confirm that is shorted. You can see array is not shorted. So it is the main difference between selection shot and bubble shot. In selection shot, you, if, even if the array is sh shorted given by the user, there is no way to find it out that array is already shorted. So you have to follow the full, you have to follow all the rounds. You have to go through all the rounds. But in case of bubble shot, in case of better to say intelligent bubble shot, if the array is shorted in, 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 in some part, in intermediate, in any part, in any round, you can stop there and there. Okay, whenever you will, since the array is already shorted, you can stop the loop there. So that is the uh, explanation of selection shot and bubble shot. There are many actually, there are many more shorted shots available, but for the time being, I will not going into those uh, techniques because that might confuse you. My entire purpose is like to make you understand. Obviously, if you are familiar with these things, so later we can explore what is other type of shorting. Now, uh, actually I am, I am following the same way what I used to follow with my students. So that's why I'm not explaining. It is not about uh, make my videos or make my classes popular. It is not like that. It is made for my students entirely. So if you are getting benefited, that will be enough for me. And I actually used to share these video links with my with my students. That's why, because somewhere it will be uploaded in the in the in the web. So whenever they will be uh, they will be requiring some of the helps or revise the classes. So that will help them. So I do not prefer to go through all the types of shorting here and make my video popular. So for the time being, what I feel it will be enough for you. If you are really starting from zero. And if you are struggling, if you are intelligent enough, then you can obviously go through all of them. There are many links, many uh, web uh, websites and many uh, classes available in YouTube, in Google. So you can uh, 
take a look into them. But for the time being, I want to jump into another topic, stack and queue. So those are only four topics that I want to mention today. So if I, uh, if I go through stack, so stack is a data structure or you can say an application. So what is application now? So stack is something like uh, an application which uh, takes, it is something like the collection of dishes. Whenever you, you have, suppose you have gone for some invitations and all, and they used to collect the empty dishes, suppose. So how it works? So the suppose you are giving your plates, you are putting your plates in this structure. So the first plate will be placed here, can be, uh, can be deleted or can be popped at last. So this is the plate number one you have just, you have put inside this structure. It is the next plate, second plate. The third one, the third person puts his or her plate on the top of second plate. And after that, someone else put their plate. Okay, so now the plate which was inserted at starting, that can be removed at last. What I'm trying to mean, suppose this is plate number one that was inserted at the starting. This is plate number two. And let me mark other plate numbers as well. The plate number three, plate number four, and plate number five. So the plate number five was inserted at last. And when someone wants to take it out, the plate number five will be the first one that we need to take, it, take out. So someone requires this type of structure, means the value, what you will be inserting at first, that will be uh, removed or you can take it away at last. Or in, uh, in other words, I can say whatever will be inserted last, that will be, uh, that you can take out at first, means last, input and first output. Okay, in short, it is being termed as LIFO. So the last input element, the last inserted element can be removed at first. Okay, so it is being called as LIFO. You can call it stack, whatever the name is, but user shouldn't understand, uh, user shouldn't sense what is there inside means, Suppose user will insert 10, 20, and 30. And if he wants to take out or if he wants to remove the uh, elements, so the first element that will be removed will be 30, not 10. So user will be having only option for insert, delete, display, and exit. That's all. So let me, uh, first let me uh, give the option to the user, enter the, size of the stack. I will not, I will never mention that it is an array. I will always mention it as a stack. Okay, so user shouldn't understand what is there inside. And in, in reality, a stack can be created using uh, array, even using linked list, and there are many ways. Okay, so you for user, it will be a stack. Like for us, our mobile phone is just a phone. We do not know what are the Android programmings has been written inside. So same will happen here. So user will be first inserting the size of the stack. And after that, what I will do, I will create a value for loop. Loop will be zero, say. And I will write a while loop or, or a for loop, whatever you can do. So until the value of loop will be less than one, say, and I will introduce a infinite loop until user wants to play with this. What I'm trying to mean, I will prompt the user like enter one for insert or here in terms of stack, this term is very popular, push. So you can write that, you can even write insert, whatever you can, but it is a famous term. That's why I have written. So 
every time I will pop up, you can see these lines are kept under while loop. So every time I will uh, give this prompt, enter one for push, enter one for pop, enter three for display, means what are the contents of the stack and enter for four for exit. Okay, so now we know the switch case. So first I will take the input first, the choice from the user. So whatever will be the choice, you can even use uh, if as well, but let me use switch case because I, I didn't get much uh, examples uh, to show this switch case, but here I can use that. So there can be uh, five situations. Case one, when user wants to uh, insert, uh, push the value, let me use the term push. Uh, case four for exit, whenever user wants to uh, exit, what I will do, I will just simply, I will write loop equals to one or loop equals to two, whatever I can write. So whenever loop will be greater than, okay, let it be less than one. Whenever it will be greater than equals to one, the, this loop will be stopped. So whenever user wants to exit, wants to stop this iteration, or wants to exit, so they will they can just press four and the value of the this variable called the loop will be one and it will be uh, he or she will be exited okay so yeah and you don't be confused with the value loop you can make it l as well so i am i have written that to make it clear like this variable is made for just for exit purpose and the last option will be default if you Default means the else part, the similar like else in if else structure. I can prompt here like invalid option. Okay, so now let me concentrate on this case one. So what I, what I can do here, I can take a variable called, okay, first let me introduce an array with n size. So with n size an array has been introduced and one value called t, t is being called as top of stack, but you do not need to remember those theoretical points. But let me take a variable called t at first, which will be placed at minus one. Means suppose if we are dealing with an array, suppose, so first the value of t will be minus one at, the, at first, okay. So now if user wants to insert some value, what will happen? First, simply I will just uh, do t equals to t plus one, means t will become zero. And after that, I will prompt user to enter a value that he or she wants to push or wants to insert. Obviously, if they have chosen case one, that means they want to go for a pushing or an insertion, obviously. So I will prompt that, enter the value you want to be pushed or you want to be inserted, obviously. So they should insert a value and I will take that value. And here, what I will do, I will write simply AT equals to val, that's all. Or you can simply, uh, do not need to take this val, you can simply, uh, right eight equals to well means for the in the zero position you will be entering something means suppose i am dealing with five size array so first what will happen t the initial value of t is minus one so t will become zero and a value will be inserted suppose 10 let me take some simple input so t will be here again if the user wants to insert something again if he or she press one so first, what will be the first step? You can see in the code, t equals to t plus one. So t will become one and the value will be inserted. Like suppose say 20. Again, t equals to t plus one, value is 30. Suppose uh, you can insert any value. You can use in, insert 35. So t and the value you want to insert. So it is any value, say 25. And the size, suppose you have in, inserted at the first, the size is n, say that is five for the time being. So again, I want to insert, so t will be plus plus, t equals to t plus one, and you can insert any value, say 15. Okay, and again, if you press one and you want to insert something, so the value 
is so you can see that the size is almost it is it is it is full now all the five values has been entered so you have confirmed the size of the stack is five suppose or it might be anything for the time being let it be like five so now you shouldn't insert any other value after this so the value of t should be when the value of t will be four i will prompt like the stack is full i mean to say again the same thing that it starts from zero that the basic thing you need to remember so whenever the t reach length minus one means that is five minus one that is four i will prompt like okay you cannot insert any more values so the first checking will be happened here like if t reaches a dot length minus one or n minus one whatever you should prompt something like this you, you do not you cannot mention array is full you have to mention like stack is full that means you cannot insert any any value now you have reached out the threshold value else if it is under the limit then you can obviously insert the value that's all for the case one what i sh what should i write in case of case two so obviously if you want to delete some value case two is made for pop or delete or remove anything you can you can name it so if you want to delete or if you want to pop some value obviously the last inserted value should be popped out in our case 15 should be popped out now so if anyone hits two or enter two at the very starting when that value of t was minus one obviously it was empty at that time so there is nothing to delete at that time. So I can simply write to user, what are you doing? Uh, stack is empty, nothing to pop or nothing to delete, nothing to pop, so let it be. Okay, so I can prompt that. If T is greater than minus one, then obviously you can pop it. So I can write something to give a good feel about the application. I can print something like a t is being popped, something like that. I can print a good message like is being popped. And I can simply write t equals to t minus one. So in compute in the world of computer, actually, no nothing real delete happens. Believe me, whenever you are deleting some movies, it is just deallocating the memory. It is not going to each and every byte and removing the content, believe me. So here, what I will do, so deleting 15, I will not do, do anything. I will just simply print that 15 is deleted and after that, the value of T will be decreased. Now you, you might think what will happen in, in this place, I will be explaining. So if anyone now try to print the array, Case three is for display. If anyone wants to print the stack, obviously, uh, if t is minus one when it was empty, I will I will just print stack is empty. That's all. And if anyone wants to print it out, what I will do? Just take a look. I will just first. Okay, I will just uh, use a for loop. You can make it straight, or I can give a feel like. Uh, I can give a feel like uh, this, like 25 is on the top of 35, yeah, like a, a hip, uh, like a, uh, the structure of dishes that I have explained a few minutes back. So to give that feel, I can print it in this order. Means I will be starting from T and printing it till the zeroth element. So I can write the program in this manner. So just to give a good feel to the users in i equals to t minus uh, t not t minus one t will be enough i is greater than equals to zero and i equals to i minus one so you are uh, good with for loop i can assume so i can simply print ai here and that will be enough i guess and uh, nothing is required so that's all our program is ready. So you can, you can think like 
I'm not printing this part. So no one will be able to see this 15. So now again, if the user hits enter one, like he or she wants to push some value. So what will happen in that case? T equals to T plus one. I will prompt to insert some value the, and the value will be inserted in this position means T will be plus plus and a value like 50 will be inserted at this position. So the older value will be overlapped by the new value. That's all. So nothing real delete happens in the, uh, in the world of programming. So you will not be, you have to be careful with your logic so that uh, you cannot see the deleted value or the older value, I would say. So if I run this program now, this program is pretty much ready. So let me take, okay, sorry. I have some bad lines after that from the previous program. Yeah, let me delete all those lines. I will not require those. So let me run this program now. Mm, it is taking some time. Okay, some break statement I have given without semicolon. Okay, yeah. It is here. Let me write it. Uh, let, let me run the program once again. So, suppose the size is five, one for, okay, first let me try to pop it out. So for user, user doesn't know the program. So for user, it will be an application or it will be an app. So whenever he or she will hit two, it will show stack is empty. Why you are trying to pop something? Okay, the user is not that good. He or she tried like three. Three means he or she want to see the array. So obviously stack is empty. So now I, I do not have any option. I do not want to exit. So I have to enter one. So I want to enter 10. After that hitting one, I want to enter 20. Hitting one, I want to enter 30. Hitting one, I want to add 40. If I want to see the stack now, if I hit three, it will show me the array. Uh, sorry, stack. User doesn't know it is array or anything. User can see something like 40, 30, 20, 10. So user uh, likes to enter another element. So let me hit in one and let me enter 50. Let me enter another value, one and 60. Okay, it is saying, it is saying stack is full. Okay, it has already propped like stack is full, yes because the size was five, I forget. So look, it prompted me stack is full. After that, I tried to enter 60 by mistake. So it is saying invalid option. So it is behaving like an application. So if I try to insert the value again, one, it is it will prompt like stack is full. Now, if I want to delete some value, the first last value inserted will be deleted. You can see the 50 was last inserted. So last in, first out. So 50 is being popped. If I want to delete another time, so 40 is being popped. Now, if I try to look what is there inside the stack, you can see 30, 20, 10 only. If I want to insert another value again, that is 60. Last time I couldn't do uh, that. I, could, if, uh, I couldn't insert 60. Now I am interested to insert 60. Now let me see what is there inside. If I enter three, you can see 10, 20, 30, 60. I cannot see 40 and 50 anymore. So now let me delete or 60. Let me delete what is next. 30 should be there. Yes. Let me delete once again. It is 20. Yeah. And I do not want to do any more insert or delete. I want to press four for exit. So that's all. So again, my suggestion will be pause the class and practice it once again if you face any doubt as you are my youtube student so i will prefer to write your doubts in the comment section i will try to figure it out and yeah that's the thing and if you are uh, my direct students obviously you can reach out to me anytime so this is what the program is and this is believe me these four programs selection bubble uh, stack and queue our most famous program. I'm not saying most important, but it is a popular one. Okay, so you have to know it. You have to keep it in your blood. Okay, do not remember all those lines. 
just fill the code if you are not able to understand why i am writing this piece of code just mention that uh, the same thing in my, in the in the comment box okay i will try to answer that so the last one for the day it is uh, the q the last one so what is q the same thing if i want to make an application for uh, fifo means first in first out so first in first out means suppose you have entered 10 uh, after that 20 after that 30 if you want to delete some value obviously 10 will be deleted at first okay so to do do this program i have to insert two value first one is r for rear and another one is front because i need to do the operation in both the ends in stack the insert and delete is happened in one end only but for Q, it will happen in both the ends. Means insert will happen in the rear end and deletion will happen in the front end. Suppose it is like an uh, Q in front of your uh, college library or school library. Suppose some people, uh, roll number 10 comes at front. This is the suppose library window. Here library window it is. Some person is sitting here and people with roll number 10 stands in front, the, in front of the gate of library. Suppose, uh, let me draw something like, this is librarian, okay. My drawing is not that good. So this is librarian and roll number 10 uh, stands in front of the gate. So I will say, this is front. And after that roll number 20 comes, 30 comes, 40, 50, and this is a rear end. Okay, so whenever someone will be coming, whenever someone will come and means I want to insert something, so R will be plus plus and the values will be inserted here. And whenever I'm trying to uh, serve someone or delete someone, F will be increased in this manner. Okay, F will be increased. R will be staying in this position itself. Okay, so the next value I want to delete, that will be F. Okay. And again, F will be plus plus. Okay. And that means 20 is being deleted. So I will be doing the same thing if I go to the uh, program. And the same thing, let me use some other name like insert the popular names for a Q. The same thing, but they uh, used to call it insert and delete or you can use remove as well or delete, let it be display and exit. The same, same structure. So whenever R reached out to a dot length minus one, I will say Q is full. So I will not going to say it's stack anymore. So Q is full. If not, what I will do? I will do just R equals to R plus one. But before that, I would like to, for the first insert, when R equals to minus one, for the first insert, I will obviously increase R, but I will, also make f as zero because initially everything is uh, minus one. So what will happen? So for the first insert, obviously r will be minus one, but I will place r here as well as I will place f here. Okay. So for the first insert, for the next one, obviously r is not anymore minus one. So only r will increase. f will remain there. So r will increase and I will insert 20. Okay, so let me write the program. For all other cases, R will be increased and I will, okay, let me change the uh, uh, printed option and I will insert AR. That's all. Okay, so that's all. So let it be a five size array. So R will be increased and 30 will be here. R will be increased. So you are able to get this idea now because we have already done uh, the stack programming. So uh, 40 and here it will be 50. So after that R is R has reached a dot length minus one. So it will be saying Q is full. That's all. So now what will happen if I want to delete the value? So first I will print a if got deleted and if will be reaching there. So after that again, I will print a if got deleted and if will be reaching there kind of that. So here, whenever 
the value of r is minus one, the or the value of f is minus one. I will say q is empty, and nothing to delete. Otherwise, I will print a f is being deleted, and f plus plus. So probably were able to understand this logic. But just think, just think. If this is, if this is the code, if this is the code, I the this Q will be, this Q can be used one time only. It is just use and throw Q, because now if anyone inserts another value, it cannot be inserted. So this is the difficulty of Q, and for that we have some solutions like circular Q and all. So that we will explore at the end of the end of our syllabus. Not now. My purpose is now just to make you understand the applications of array. That's all. So those data structures part. What? How I can solve this problem of Q uh, by using some shifting Q or circular Q? That I will explore later. But for the time being, you can you can see. I have deleted two values. But if I want to insert something, I cannot. Rather, I have only three values, and the size I have defined is five. But still, I cannot use uh, remaining two positions. After that, if if big, if I delete another value, f reach out to this position. So still, I cannot use these values anymore. So there is no option for R to come back to this position for the time being. So again, if I delete some value, delete this value, obviously f will reach out to here. Again, if I delete this value as well, f will go beyond of that. So whenever, whenever after doing this task, whenever if f reach out, if f becomes r plus one, what I will do? I will just Do like r equals to minus one and f equals to minus one means to the initial position one second. Okay, but there is still this problem is not solved. What will happen in case of suppose this? I have deleted two elements, but still I cannot use all five positions. I can only use these three positions. So the answer of this uh, obviously it will be pending. This cannot be solved in in Q. We have some other data structure, other applications to solve this, but for the time being, a a classic Q cannot solve this problem. So this Q can be used only once you delete all the values, and uh, if you delete all the values, and f becomes r plus one, and then it will be reset one second. So let me give the example. Let me show you uh, by running this program. So here the last few steps. Q is empty, and here I can run the program like i equals to starting from f. I will be less than equals to r. I equals to i plus one, obviously, and all the AIs will be printed. So let me run this program first. Okay, I did something wrong. T equals to minus one somewhere. I think in the diff yeah here. So it will be r. Uh, okay, let me run this program once again. So here, size of the stack is five. The user it is bad. The user first tries to delete some value. Obviously, it will show Q is empty. User tries to display the Q. It will be showing Q is empty again. So now there is no other option uh, apart from inserting some value. So I will insert ten. I will insert twenty. I will insert thirty. I will insert forty, four values. So I have a provision of five elements, but I have inserted four. If I want to display, if I press three, you can see ten, twenty, thirty, forty. So now, if I want to delete a value, so obviously ten will be deleted. If I want to delete another value, obviously twenty will be deleted. So if I want to print now, what is there inside? You can see only thirty and forty there. So I want to insert another value. Called fifty. So now, how it looks? It is thirty, forty, fifty. 
So only three values are there. Now, if I want to insert once again, it is saying key is full. So that problem is there. But if I want to delete something, I can. 30 is being deleted. Again, if I want to delete something, 40 is being deleted. Again, if I want to delete something, 50 is deleted. Now, if I want to insert like 60, I can insert. Okay, so you have to delete everything to insert the values once again. Okay, and the existing problem that you cannot use the full uh, size of the queue after deletion, that can be solved later. I will explain obviously. Note it somewhere. Uh, I will explain it later as well. Later in the at the at the end of our syllabus, not now. So if I try to print, obviously 60 is the only element there and I want to exit. So that is the thing. I will suggest you to pause the class and check it once again. So that will be helpful for you to understand what is going there. Okay. So now for the exercise part, if I go to the media, so for this, you can follow it is it actually belongs to some other uh, part of course it is data structure but still you can go to this part shorting okay and you can check all the shorting related problems obviously uh, there are something like i have asked for uh, like uh, short the array in the descending order or if you can remember while shorting i was placing the value the longest value at the end or the in case of selection short the smallest value at the front what will happen if i want to store the maximum value at the end so just try that try to think in many ways so that will help you actually to uh, increase your logical sense because now if you can think if you can uh, think like whatever we have done in the for loop that was much easier you can you can feel it so if you try that tough programs obviously that will be easier after a few days so the same will happen again it is a shorting and you can find the same uh, in case of stack and queue as well so it is not mandatory that you have to take the initial value of r and f as minus one you can start that with zero as well so you can take anything you can take anything you can you can you can uh, do some experiment with stack and queue so all of these exercises has been mentioned here so just give a try. If you are facing any doubts, just let me know. And the last thing, what I used to sh uh, used to uh, show to my students, like some what I am I was discussing a few minutes back. This is the class you can. Uh, this is the sorry. This is the video you can check. This is a Beckham video where he just put three ball inside some beam, which was uh, which was. Uh, means far away actually in the in the in the sea beach uh, for me i cannot even touch the ball to that beam but you can check the video what a practice can do i'm not saying that it used to happen with beckham i saw some child uh, beside my office they just for for obviously for some um, earning purpose they can just uh, they can work over the rope they can work over the rope. They do not have any talent. They do not have any education, but practice makes them stronger. They can even uh, in one, even, even I saw they are balancing something, balancing some dishes over the head and they can, they are working over the rope. So practice can make it happen. Okay. So it is not about the talent. It is not about the education. If you practice anything over the years, over the months, over the days, obviously it will change something. So I am just saying this because I am considering all of you as my students. And I used to give these ex uh, means these explanations and all these uh, uh, stories uh, from my personal life to them. But here the for YouTube classes, the chances are less, the opportunities are less. So just that's why I was trying to share as much as I can. So anyway, for the day, all the links will be available in the details section, as well as you can see the details here. You can pause the screen and take a note of all of those. So that's all for the day. Bye. Practice more. See you again in the next class. Bye-bye.